All right. Ready to see what happens in numbers 22? It's improv Bible study, y'all. We're not real respectful, but we're real thorough. 22. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people, because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Baor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand, and they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam, and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, with co which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them, peradventure I shall be able to overcome them, and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. Then Balak sent yet again princes, more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam, and said to him, Thus saith Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. For I will promote thee unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God, to do less or more. Now therefore, I pray you, tarry ye here also this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them, but yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that thou shalt do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled, because he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, with his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself against the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further, and stood in a narrow place, where there was no way to turn, either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am I not thine ass upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. 
And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that I shall speak. And Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Kirjath Huzoth. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high parts of Baal, and thence he might see the utmost part of the people. Numbers 22. Usually referred to as the story of Balaam's ass, I think more appropriately might be known as the story of Balaam the Unflappable. Balaam, a prophet of the Lord. The same Lord who used to live over in Ur of the Chaldees has apparently sojourned up Moab way and has taken to hanging out up there during the 400 years the Israelites were in Egypt because, you know, the Egyptian gods hold sway down there and it took a long time and a lot of knuckle cracking and working up of nerve before God went plunging down into Osiris and Seth's territory to drag his chosen people out. I told you we weren't real, real respectful around here. Anyway, for whatever reason and through whatever mechanic, Balaam is a prophet of the Lord. And this, this huge host of Israelites is coming warlording up the land along the, the, the Red Sea trade route, as was related in the book of the Wars of the Lord. And uh, the king of... Uh, the king of what's it? Balak, the king of what's it? Hears word of this this marauding army of desert people, and that they've just wiped out an entire kingdom and are camped out in the town and starting to move further east. He sends word to Balaam and says, "I need your help. I got me an invading force on my hands, and I need you to come down and and curse them." need you to curse them real good so that they'll be weak enough to where I can take them on. Because there's a shit ton of them, and they're too many and too strong for me and my little army. Balaam says, well, um, yeah, sure, why not? Tells the messengers, stay here with me, we'll head out first thing in the morning, I'll get my cursing on. And the Lord comes to Balaam in the night. Says, uh, you got company. Who's your house guest? And Balaam says, oh, hi, Lord. This is, this is the same Lord who has to have a special, special veil inside a special tent, inside a special enclosure to keep the glory of the beauty of his presence from sandblasting the, the almighty soul out of anybody in the in the Israelite camp, which is a, a power he's attained since or during Egypt days, because he was appearing to Abraham right, left, and sideways all over the place, eating with him and washing his feet under the tree and shit. So anyway, I just realized I left that fan on. I'm sorry, y'all. So anyway, No. Now that I've noticed it, that's going to bug the crap out of me. Uno momento. I'll be honest, I don't know if that worked. I'm still learning some of the tricks with this camera.
Okay, so, Balaam says, hi, Lord. Uh, well, these, these house guests of mine, these, these are some of, some of King Balak's men. Uh, he's got this marauding host calling themselves Israelites who are come charging up out of Egypt and they're, they're rampaging through the entire land as they go, uh, except when they ask real nice and the king says they're not allowed to come through the highway um, or unless the border's real strong. And then they and their psychopathic god that they follow uh, apparently they do have some limits. Anyway, it's a whole thing. And King Balak wants me to come and put the cursing of you on him so that uh, so that he can stand up to him in battle and, and protect his cities and his crops and his vineyards and his little ones and so on and so forth. God says, Oh, the Israelites. Okay. Yep. Yep. I, I, I didn't give you all the heads up about that, did I? Well, here's the thing. I've kind of given all this uh, to them because uh, I made a promise to their great, 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 great grandsister um, back in back in my, my floating lamp miraging days. Uh, so don't go with the princes and don't curse the Israelites because uh, um, they're they're my favorite. Balaam says, okay, you the boss. So he gets up in the morning and he tells Balak's men, um, no can do. Sorry, God says no. The princess says, well, well, all right. Appreciate your time. Thanks for your hospitality. They go back to the house. King Balak says, um, where is my prophet? I sent you to bring me a prophet. And they say, well, the prophet wouldn't come. Uh, he says these people are special, and he's not gonna he's not gonna lay any curses on. Them. Balak says okay. So he sends more princes, greater in number and greater in honor, with the same ass message. And they roll up to Balaam's place, and Balaam says, "Hey, princes, what's thinking?" They say, "Well, we're here to ask you to reconsider about that whole cursing the Israelites thing." He says, I can't do it. All right? I'm a prophet. Prophets say what God's telling them to say. My God told me, don't say that. Water your camels, rest up for the night, go back and tell Balak to leave me the fuck alone and save himself a trip. Because I see how this is going. First the little princes, then the bigger princes. He's going to be up here himself with his royal retinue in a couple of days, and I don't feel like doing this again. Or getting my head chopped off. So the princes stay the night. And the Lord comes to Balaam at night and says, uh, Balaam, Balaam, I see you thinking again. All right, fine. Go with them, but don't don't say nothing I don't tell you to say. Balaam says, all right. So he saddles up with them first thing in the morning and heads back down towards Balak's place. Well, come to find out the Lord was sleepwalking the night before and uh, forgot or didn't know or sent one of his alternate personalities or something uh, to talk to Balaam the night before because he, he looks around, he sees Balaam's going off with Balak's princes and he gets all pissed. So he sends an angel, an invisible one. Uh, well, invisible to people. Animals can see it. To head Balaam off at the pass. And the angel goes, draws his sword, stands in the path. Balaam's donkey says, oh, no, fuck this noise. We're going this way instead. Balaam's like, get back into the road. So they loop around the angel. The angel goes, well, fuck, that didn't work too good. So he goes and he stands in a, a narrow place with a wall on either side. He draws a sword and he stands there. The donkey goes, oh, fuck, this is close. Uh, scrapes back, squashes Balaam's foot against the wall on one side. Balaam starts beating on it again. The angel goes, well, god damn it, I... I I feel like there's something being lost in translation here, but I don't know what it is. I've done a... If 
fine. And he picks a place that's too narrow in the road for anybody to get past one side or the other, including the donkey, stands there. The donkey says, oh, fuck, falls down on its face. Balin starts beating the donkey again. God looks down and goes, huh. He makes the donkey able to talk. Which is the point at which our suspension of disbelief breaks down. You know, this 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 chapter is is often this story uh, is often cited as as a a good example of why the Bible can't possibly be literally true. Yeah, it's because of the talking donkey. Uh, not the not the invisible angel with the sword or the the split personality deity that uh, kills some people just by being seen and and comes to others in the middle of the night and chats. You know, none of that. Just the, the talking donkey, though, that's a bridge too far. Donkey says, what the fuck are you doing, old man? Balaam doesn't miss a beat. Doesn't miss a beat. Doesn't even react. His donkey talks to him. And he answers it back without missing a beat. And they have a little back and forth. And finally, God goes, Oh! I sent the invisible one! Dang it! And he... Whoos, and then Balaam's able to see the angel. And goes, Oh! Sorry, donkey. There was a reason for... Sorry, donkey. Ow! Oh, I'm so dead, aren't I? The angel says, no, I'm not here to kill you. I was here to stop you, but since that's taken the whole damn day, I figure you might as well go on to Balak's place. Just remember, don't say nothing. God don't tell you to say. Balaam says, well, yeah, I heard that last night. The angel says, what? Balaam says, nothing. Goes on to Balak's place. Balak says, what took you so long? Balaam says, you're lucky I'm here at all. God damn it, I'm a prophet. Weird fucking book. We'll be back soon with chapter 23 for more Balaam. Comedy gold, old Balaam. Fuck the Pope to subscribe. Hit your thumbs ups for me if you would. And we will see you again here soon. I'll remember to turn off the fan next time. <laughs> Take care. Be safe.